Uh, I'll make two comments. Uh, number one, I was watching when I watch videos, uh, I, I was purposely doing it with the, the full screen. You know, I'd set mine to full screen and re we'd record that way. But by by doing this, I'll, I'll have more options of what what image I get up front because it says what thumbnail do you want to use and it randomly picks stuff out. So I'm going to start it with with all three videos on here today, just so it gives me more options. The other thing I noticed is that when I'm recording and I have the uh, you know, when, when it goes to full screen and somebody sharing the screen, it puts a little uh, block of picture icons. And I normally, that, I think it show up in the upper right hand corner, which always covers up something on the video. So I got in the habit of putting that down in the lower right hand corner. And every once in a while on the video, you heard me say, here, let me move my pictures out of the way. And I grab them and drag them to the full left of the screen. But when I go watching on the video, they just move a little bit to the left. And then, so they're still right in the way. So that's just something else. If you're ever doing this kind of stuff, keep in mind it doesn't do what you think it's going to. So, so if you're if you're if you are the one doing the recording and you're playing with this stuff, just remember you should go back occasionally and watch your videos to see if what you think you're doing is actually working. So that's 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 just a couple of points I had there. Thanks for that. So Juan, Juan is showing us his uh, little car that he's got. What? This one is the uh, the 3D printer uh, Noah robot. That's the one that we are working in the community of Ross in Spanish. Uh, the, his, the, the main pro purpose of the robot is to try to, to get the, like a clone of the turtle boat, but much cheaper. And we are trying to accomplish the uh, uh, heavy work in the middle world uh, to try to let that uh, be open to most of the platforms that now are uh, being developed like Arduino and e e STM32 and ESP32. Uh, so the, the main work now is <clears throat> we are I'm working in two things. The, the simulator, trying to get the documentation about the simulator right, <clears throat> using the simulator, and trying to get the middleware working, the es 32 working. Uh, besides, trying to use the simulator, the Ross Agriculture simulator that we were always working. One, can you hold that back up again? You said it was an Ackerman vehicle? No, 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 no. It's not an Ackerman vehicle. That, I was trying to say that this one is not like the tractor because the tractors are Ackerman vehicles and this one is not uh, like that. And it, were you planning on that one being GPS enabled or not GPS enabled? Yes, it's enabled with GPS. Uh, and that's... Uh, something that we are working i uh, yesterday uh, because i cut on saturdays the the meetings i was working with a, a guy from argentina too that he's working with a robot he's using the the ublox because i don't remember both of you used the the, the ublox i do not okay he's using the the ublox gps rtk uh, uh, we get in touch uh, a week ago, and we are heavily working with uh, with with him. So I think I hope that in, I will get some data uh, of RTK. He found out the my RTK uh, transmission station. And he didn't know that I was the one that was publishing the RTK correction from Argentina. Uh, but uh, I'm, I, I will have to reveal that because I got problems with the, with the birds eating the cables uh, <laughs> last week. Yes, it's true. Last week, I lost my, as I live in the farm, and you see here, this is my, my mother house in the town. Uh, and we lose the, 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 
point-to-point -point connections uh, be, because I saw that it was a heavy rain, but when the guy that works in the antenna got up, he found out that the bird had eaten the, the cables. And this is a very common problem now. I don't know really why. Some Somebody says uh, that is about they are using a, a soy, soy uh, oils with the plastics and birds and rats find the, the cables something tasteful uh, and that's the main problem but well uh, so uh, I lost the connection with my RTK uh, station so I don't I'm not sure if the same problem and I will have to go and, and, and rebuild it again but now I have a, 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 a guy that is working in the same place at RTK to go uh, like I was working The other news, I'm, I'm, now that I'm talking, is that I was able to uh, um, to uh, I was able to regain control and get back my simulations uh, with the Ross Agriculture. This is the one that got the, only the the move it, not the multiplex. And I'm able to, with the joystick again, move the tractor, and I'm very happy with this. Uh, the one thing that I was trying to do uh, was that uh, trying to get the correction, the GPS uh, working again here. Uh, um, well, I hope that in the next weeks, I will be able to do that, uh, but I'm very happy because I don't know why this got very, uh, it get very difficult for me to, to achieve it. So this is all in simulation here? Yes, yes, yes. And yes. for a GPS signal, how are you simulating a GPS signal? Because you get the, uh, when when we work in the in the in this simulation, we get to to work uh, with the topic that was uh, like this. Let me show you. Yeah. Topic. There was a topic was called fake GPS. Here. Yeah and fake UTM that were the ones that Vini was working around. Uh, and I don't know why I'm not able to, I don't remember, I, I, got, I got to go. Uh, 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 yes, was from Odom to La. I, I got to get back to the documentation, and I don't remember if there is any kind of documentation about this, but uh, I will try to work it uh, and get the GPS working here. Because the last thing that I was able to do uh, was to get a, a topic working with from the Arduino, uh, from the Arduino to ROS, because the, you got here simulated the 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 ROS serial, and I think that I can achieve this. But I I will need to work much a lot. I believe the uh, the way the GPS works on that simulator 
is there's a Python program written that runs and it's called like xy to LLA dot pi or something like that. Yes. It seems like you just have to fire that up. And as long as it connects to the numbers coming out of the simulator, that it should be publishing that. But I, I don't know for sure. Yes, yes. I, I think that you are uh, you're right. I don't remember. And I missed part of your discussion because I had to go get some paper for my printer. But um, okay. so, so, so basically, if your simulator is running and you, you do your topic list, which you've got on the right there, does it have, I, I can't even think what the, uh, it says fake GPS. Is that putting that topic? Yes, yes. Up? Fake GPS and fake UTM. I, I got to, to, uh, to get one of the things that I will, I think that the best approach when you're trying to work with this is to get a plan. So I will build a plan of, of work uh, and I will try to achieve it because uh, it's easy to get lost in when you're trying to work with this. So one of the things that I need to, to, to get is more fiable with, with pros and this is a great tool to do that. So I will work with this. Cool. Yes, and one, one thing that I will try to, uh, one, one of the main things that I was able to do today was to reconnect the folders to my computer from the Docker file. So, so I will be able to, uh, to easily um, publish them in GitHub as a repository uh, as I get the work done. I don't think I understand that. Yes. You'll be able to publish them where? In GitHub, like a repository. So uh, one thing that is very uh, important about the Docker files is that you get a, a I will try to explain it the best way uh, that I can. But when you work with the, um, the let me show you. When you work with the, you can uh, use your the folders that are in the real computer, not in the uh, in the container. So you can work with the com with your computer in the in the container, and you can uh, create a workflow, and don't lose your work uh, as you uh, close up the image. The and that's very important to to keep adding. And as you can see, uh, I can share with you and anyone the, the, the script, uh, let me show you, the, the, the Kathleen, my Kathleen space. Right. And, and, and all my folder, my home folder. So you can replicate the same thing that I have done in your computer and we can uh, share uh, or work in an easy way. Uh, as you go, uh, this one, this folder is. The folder is 40, uh, 40 megabytes. The, the, the folder that contains all my Kathleen workspace. Uh, and if you can see here, this is uh, an ad uh, file. The, this one, it was the file that we were trying to achieve to, the, to do the uh, point uh, navigations without right. the GPS. Uh, so I get all this back. <laughs> I thought that I, will, I can lose it. So that's, uh, I don't have nothing more.
Well, the only thing, um, I mean, Jeff, I don't have much. I'll, I'll, I, I can go and then you can have the rest of the time. Um, let's see, where's my guest? Um, I uh, spent time rewriting my uh, transmission control code that sits on the, uh, it happens to be a Teensy um, that controls the super servo that manages the transmission, the physical transmission for the lawn tractor. Um, a long time ago, there was a PID there, and then it basically was just an on-off control. And um, effectively, what it has now is, you know, settings that send a series of different PWM. I call them PWM signals. It's um, I mean, here's the the actual. I mean, that's the actual statement that sends. It writes those. You know, it's the statement that sends this microseconds to the the, the super servo and. 1290 puts the super servo at a position where, you know, the lawn tractor is not moving, i.e. neutral. Um, and so that's neutral. All of these need to be refined, but the intent would be 1525 would be one and a half meters a second. That would be something like 0.3 meters a second. That would be one meter a second. That would be 0.75 meters a second forward. That would be reverse one meter a second, and that would be reverse point five meters a second reverse. Uh, so, I'll, uh, can, uh, can I ask you a question? As you, I'm reading your code, this uh, you, your tractor is like uh, like man is automatic, but you are trying to simulate uh, different speeds. When you say simulate, I mean, it's basically putting, it's trying to, it will put the control arm of the transmission in a preset position that yes, if- I understand, that was a question. Yeah, on, on, you know, flat ground in average, you know, an average environment, it would run at an average speed. I mean, it could vary based on the environment and based on the RPMs of the engine, but generally, yes. So on that point, you say you've designed, or you, you're assuming this is for flat ground. Have you ever driven over flat ground and verified the speed stays reasonably where you want it and then tried to go up a hill and see do, does the hill actually slow it down everybody no, keeps not yet. everybody keeps telling me that that's that's the problem they perceive that if you go up a hill or you go over say from the pavement onto the grass that it's going to run at a different speed and i don't know if anybody's ever tested for that 
I, I've always made the assumption a hydrostatic transmission will should not be affected that much by, say, the angle you're driving or the type of material driving through. So some someday when you're out driving around, it, I'd be curious to find out what yours does. Now that you can set a specific speed and it just stays there, you know, drive it on flat ground and see what speed that reports. And then if you have a hill in your yard or or drive from your say you're on your for your pavement on the grass and then go look at the speeds and see does that actually affect the speed yeah, yeah all of this is just theory at the moment um because i need to test it all but it in my a... experience that uh, with working with uh, with tractors yes it's always affected uh, either static transmission is uh, always affected by the terrain It, it basically is just um, an attempt to take out some variables while I'm testing because this is, I don't, at the moment, I'm less interested in managing speed and more interested in managing steering control. And so I want to just get hacked together something that's going to give me something reasonable for speed control in an environment that I'm familiar with. And then I'll worry about speed control refinement a little bit later, so. And I'm, I'm not suggesting you change anything for speed control. I'm just saying next time you're out driving around, it would be handy if you try it under, just take what you got under different conditions just to see, does it actually affect it enough to worry about? Yeah, I think it's it, a, it would be a people great do test. A, people do a lot of effort to fix this problem that may not be there. So I'm just curious if anybody actually actually has that problem. And my mine's not in a condition to do it, so I can't go out and go out and test it. And so the notion is um, compile this and put it on the Teensy at these rates, but then a little bit lower in the code. It also goes out and pulls in um, this parameter, you know, which is a, a function of ROS, so that I can adjust, you know, those settings by pulling in the parameter and it reloads that every so often. Um, so that I don't have to recompile this thing. Because for me at the moment, I can't remotely program. Uh, I can't program the Steensy over the air. I've got to physically connect my laptop up to the Teensy, and that's annoying. But if, if I can update these parameters remotely, then that'll make it easy to adjust these settings and pull it in via this parameter functionality. So that's what I, that's my next step is to get the speed under some sort of reasonable. Uh, reasonable control. And as you can see, that's all out on GIST and the link is there in the Slack channel. Thank you. That's where I'm at. And I think, um, I did not buy a musher, 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 whatever that is, musher Ackerman device, Jeff. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll see it next week then. <laughs> yeah, just say, maybe, maybe next week when it rains, if it rains and I can't get out because it's going to get cold. I mean, I'm not south of the equator. Juan's got <laughs> spring coming, I have winter coming. <laughs> Winter is coming. Yeah, we, we should all move. We should all move uh, south. South uh, should all be south of the equator. Don't go to Florida. That it's okay there. My brother is now there, and they get the very good uh, weather. Anyway, over to you, Jeff. I looked at that musher code or that whole website a little more, and they do have lots of pages of documentation. And they've got some code, but I can't find anything in there. I, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to use it as a reference because I can't figure out what they're doing. So I, I, 
So, so the other thing I've been doing this week is digging through, looking for all these different Ackerman um, vehicles that would run in gazebo. And I found lots of different ones. And a, a bunch of them are all based on the same, the, the same original RC car that a guy made. And that's been forked like 100 to 200 times. So there's, there's multiple versions of that stuff out there. And I, that's the one I, I had, well, back a couple of years ago when I decided I was going to do this, I pulled up a random version of that and it would not compile. And it, I don't know if it was a Ross version or a, a Ubuntu version or what my problem was. But then I poked around and found that one that's got the red wheels on it. And that's when I posted on the uh, Slack channel a couple of times. Let's see, can I get that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I got my mobile robot. Uh, screen one. It's out of the way. Plus ultrasonic sensors, is that the one? No, it's this one that was um, well, here. Let's uh, get all these screens in the way. Can you see my screen right now? Yes. Okay. So if I close that, come on. Yeah. So on Friday, Friday, October 29th is when we're posting this. And I've got this image. It's a. No, it's not what I wanted either. Assuming you can still see that, this is the, the red RC car that I pulled up and loaded and it does indeed drive around. So, so down here at the bottom, I just put in a uh, command line that's an Ackerman, Ackerman command and the car does drive around in a circle. And if we back up, oh, I think the other thing, if I look at, uh, no, 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 no. What was that? This one. This is actually the original thing I posted. Um, and it says nine months ago. So, so if you back up in, uh, if, if, you, if you look at that post, it, it has a link back to this. So you can see where I posted that. So this is indeed a, an RC car that drives around in gazebo and does work. So I thought, well, I'll just modify this. And I went and looked at it. And I thought, well, I'll just put bigger wheels on it and put them where they're supposed to be. And when I started looking at it, it looked like, um, stop share, get these back of the way again. When I looked at it, I thought, well, that's way too complicated because he's got shock absorbers and he's got full independent suspension on all the wheels. And I didn't want any of that. And I thought, rather than trying to rip that out, I'll just find somebody else's. And after a lot of digging, I finally decided, I'm gonna go back to this one again and put big wheels on. And I did. And it, it does indeed drive around. It's not right because he's got all, it's all built with macros and he, he assumes he's at this point, he's going to subtract off this unit and add this to it. So I can't, can't get everything right where I want it. But it does indeed, I, I do indeed have the same vehicle with bigger tires that should close, they sort of represent my mini tractor. And the other thing I noticed was most of these don't have any kind of odometry output. So if I, if I pull up the right files, I can find some, some that's controlling the steering and generating odometry. But uh, the simple one, like the one for the RC car, does not have any odometry output. And I was digging around and, and one of them, I, I, don't have, I don't have the links here handy, but somebody else has one that, that defines a little RC car. And that one, he did add odometry to it. And it was simply a matter of, he's got a Python program that goes out and subscribes to, I think it's called gazebo states or gazebo link states. This is something that gazebo is always publishing. And it searches through that to find the one called Baselink, which just gives you a, uh, basically a, a, a pose of Baselink. So it tells you your X, Y, theta location and your, your rotational values, you know, your forward speed and your rotational speed. And he just simply grabbed that and converted that into an odometry and a transform message and publishes it. So I took that one and added to mine. And that seems it's publishing odometry. I don't know how, how close it is, how well it works. 
and it's not the ultimate thing, but for right now, that gives me what I need. So I can, I can define, define a, an actual physical model and then have odometry running and then use his original script to control the wheels on it. So that, that's kind of where I'm at right now is playing with that. And I'm, I'm fighting with all the little things on gazebo trying to figure out why did they do this and how do I get, how do I unwind these macros? Because right now all four tires have to be the same size the way the thing is written. So I need to have it so separate that out so I can define the front tires and define the back tires. And that way I can have smaller tires in the front to match my vehicle. So that's, it's just gonna be a lot more playing around to, uh, to get that stuff to work. And then the other thing I was noticing is you go out to get somebody's code and they say, well, this is written for noetic or for melodic or for kinetic or for, or for Foxy or something else. So there's still a problem of, you know, try, try to get stuff pieced together. And it could be if I just go ahead and try it, it would all work. I don't know. So that would be, that would be interesting. But I just, I, I just noticed something here. I'm, I'm doing a, oh, Oh, never mind. I know why it's doing it. I was going to say I'm talking, but I don't see myself on the screen. I just see Juan. And I, I realize, oh, it just does that because since I'm recording or since I'm the one watching it, it's not, it doesn't put me on the screen, I think is what's happening. <laughs> it, yes, you are in my screen. Okay. So, so again, it's one of those funny things about the way Zoom records stuff, I guess. If you click on view and put it on gallery view, I think it will show. I mean, I don't. Maybe well, you have it, it, it probably will. It's just that it, it took me by surprise that I expected I expect me to be on the screen since I'm talking and it wasn't there. But if it's showing up for everybody else, then that's that's fine. So anyway, this to summarize, I, I I can I can now build a vehicle, I can control it from a, a ROS command, and I can generate odometry. And it's just gonna be a matter of playing around now to uh, to get everything to the sizes I want. And oh, the other thing I notice is it, it's not tracking correctly because there's another YouTube video that says, oh, here's how you verify if your steering on gazebo for an Ackerman vehicle is correct. And he turns on um, uh, links or joints or some something center of mass. He turns on something and it puts his big pink blob around everything, but it draws a line through all of your, your wheels. So you got a line coming out your, uh, the back wheel that goes out, you know, parallel, or it goes perpendicular to your, your travel. And then each front wheel has a line that comes through it. So, so as you turn those, those two lines on an Ackerman vehicle, those two lines should cross that back line from the back wheels at some point. That's your center of radius as you turn. And I noticed on mine, those are not working really at all and one of the problems is when i put on bigger tires and i move stuff around i haven't gone through all of his little calculations to get all that stuff correct so i that might solve my problems so i'll go back to his original rc car and that that was not working right either it's not not completely right so there's something else there but but once i get the whole framework working then i can go through and track it down and you know one step at a time try to try to fix it to get that to work so anyway, that's Chef. my plan. That's my plan at this point. Yes. Chef, uh, uh, you were the 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 one that you are working. You say that it was in noetic. I found I found various versions, and the one I'm running right now is running in kinetic. And there was one that okay. I, I found one. That, oh, this is perfect. It 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 does everything I want to. I'll just load up the whole thing, and it says, "Well, it's for melodic." even though my, so I've got one laptop with, with uh, Noetic, which is the newest one. I got my robot laptop with Kinetic, which is back several versions. And, and the one they specified it for is right in the middle of that. And I, so I don't know what would happen if I try loading that. Um, it, it may or may or may not work, but it's just trying to piece all these different modules together is what one of the things I was running into. It could be it would work, but I didn't know if I wanted to spend the time and and two days later, find out, oh, it's not going to work because this version doesn't work with something. So, yes, the main the main difference because uh, the the Ross Agriculture uh, Simulator is in Kinetic. Kinetic use Python two point seven, and Noetic the use Python three. Um, that's I think that the, the main difference. So when you are programming, you will have the problems with. The, those version of Python. Out of curiosity, Jeff, did you 
did he have much documentation on how he created the URDF for that, you know? Well, it, it's, uh, it's simply the original RC car that some guy built, I think as a university project. And that's got, you know, this URDF all put together so you need simulating a Traxxas something RC car. And it's down to the point where he says, well, here's the motor that's in it. And it's this type of motor. It's got this amount of torque and this kind of RPM. And he's got all these calculations. So he's simulated it right down the point. In fact, it's it's one of the, I think it's a four, four, the four wheel drive cars. And each wheel has a some kind of a U-joint built into it in the simulation, which I'm going to get rid of all that stuff. But as far as the the step by step of how he did that, I have not run across that. I I I did find one one page where a guy said, you know, I find it very frustrating that nobody documents how you build these Ackerman vehicles. So here I'll go through the steps to do this, and, and he's he's got some more information telling you a little bit more about what's going on on that page. But and he, he started out right up front. He said, this is all open, open source stuff. I'm just putting it together and documenting what I did here. And I'm not sure there's a lot of, uh, I, I haven't found a good tutorial that says, let's just start and build this thing from scratch or said, let's take one that exists and step through and figure out you know, what was actually done here. So the answer is, no, I don't have anything really good. I've, I've got you know, probably 50 pages bookmarked of all, all different steps of doing this kind of stuff. And it's just a matter of digging through and finding what I want, you know, at the time. And then but hopefully I can say, okay, go look at this page. It'll tell you how to do this and go look at this page. It'll tell you how to do this. So maybe, maybe when I get this running, then I'll have something I can say, either go look at these different things, or I can say, here's, so if we look at this page, I take this information, then write up what I did, and then say, now we go to the next step, look at this other page, and then write up some more steps I did. So, so at the moment, I don't have anything I can point you to that says, here's how you make it work. <laughs> that's, that's what I've been looking for this whole time, and I haven't found that yet. Well, Juan, did you guys do a URDF for your, your what you were holding up earlier? Uh, yes. Do you want me to share, to share it with you? Well, I'm just curious who, who created the URDF and how did they do that? Oh, I, it's the, the, I think that the guys that created are the guys from Ecumen uh, for, the, for the robot, but uh, I can share it. The, uh, the, the guy that created the original URDF was uh, Gonzalo Cervetti, that was the one that built up the robot. I mean, because creating a URDF is, uh, well, from my perspective, it, it takes skill to create the URDF. Yes, uh, it's not easy. Uh, and the main thing is when you try to, 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 to port that uh, URDF file to the, to the simulator. That's, that's why uh, this project is also for, important for me because I'm working with people that know how to do that. I'm not, uh, I'm not capable to do it by myself, at, at least for the moment. And I will make the statement that a URDF file is not, I should say, not a unique thing because Al has a URDF file and his is simply defining what sensors he has and where they're located on the vehicle. So that's that's something you can do with it. Now, if you're trying to get something to run in Gazebo, in Gazebo, you're actually building a model of the vehicle that's going to run. So, so that's, that's step number one. You have to actually build a model. So in my case, I need four wheels. I need the four rotary joints, and then I need two more joints in the front to make it steer. So I have to uh, physically define that. So I have to physically build a model that will then when I start up gazebo, it shows up on the screen and I can see it there. The next step is you have to have some way to control the thing. So if you're running a differential drive vehicle, they've got an actual, uh, it's either a ROS plugin or a gazebo plugin, or maybe it's a ROS gazebo plugin. So down at the bottom, you can say, load this uh, differential drive controller. So right in, right in your URDF file, you load that controller and you point to your back wheels and that thing will automatically 
uh, subscribe to a command velocity message, do all the calculations to make your make your back wheels turn. And then it also takes the position of the back wheels and publishes an odometry message out of that. Now, if you're doing an Ackerman vehicle, it, I, I haven't, I, I can't tell if somebody has a plug-in that will plug right into the URDF and make this work. What everybody seems to, what, what most people are doing, because I don't know that if somebody actually has a plug-in, what most people do is they have a separate program running, either a Python program or a CPP program that's running, and it will subscribe to your ROS uh, commands, whether you're using command velocity or Ackerman message, or so one, one guy is just defining, he's got a float 64 for speed and a float 64 for steer, a float 64 for braking, and a float 64 that's either, a, I think, a, a one or a minus one to tell it to go forward or backward. Seems like a little overkill on that, but that, so that, that's three different ways you can control this thing. And so you have to have uh, some kind of ROS controller to, to run the steering and to run the forward backward motion. So that's, that's the second thing you need some way. Once you get the model built in URDF, then you have to have this other controller that's either a separate program or a plugin for URDF to do that. And then the third thing you have to have uh, when you start adding sensors, you just, you just copy blocks of code from somewhere. So if you want a GPS, you drop in a block of code that says, I have a GPS. This is where it's located on the vehicle. And then it, when you run it, it automatically just starts publishing your latitude and longitude. Same way with an IMU, you can just say, put in a simulated IMU and it will do that. And if you want a sonar, you can do that. And you just go down the line, there are people who have written all these different things. So that's the third thing, you know, once you get the, once you get a model, once you get a controller for it, and then the third thing is add the sensors onto it that you want. So that, that's kind of the, the pieces that go together there. And the, so back to what Al has, his, his says he has a GPS, he has an IMU and he has something else and they're located at these points on his vehicle. And the reason that you do that is you, you, you put it in the URDF file and then you run, I think it's called uh, Robot State Publisher and it strips all that stuff off and builds your transforms for you. So it, his, his has nothing to do with simulation, but, but that's a URDF file that he's using for a real vehicle. Now he could, he could add to that he'd have to add a lot to it to get a URDF that would run in gazebo and fully define his vehicle. So it's, so it's not as though a URDF file is one thing. You can use it for different things. You can put different stuff into it. So that's, that, I, I, I pretty much knew that all along, but as I'm digging here, that, that's becoming more obvious. You know, that just is what you have to do. So my, my current thing is I'm trying to reverse engineer, reverse engineer somebody's URDF file to get out the pieces to build my model. And that's, I, since I took the guy's code that actually would run on my screen, I just started changing the size and the location of things. That, that was the first step there. And he's got some kind of a Python program that will control the steering. And I think it controls the steering and the forward, forward motion, but it didn't have the odometry part built into it. And that's why I found a, yet another external program that will subscribe to gazebo and generate odometry messages. So again, it's just a matter of piecing stuff together. And if I get this down to the point, I can say a, a tractor or you know, basically what the, the standard thing we would use for an agriculture uh, vehicle, specifically here, you know, people have lawn tractors and I've got my mini tractor and my mini tractor is essentially um, patterned after a lawn tractor and then a lawn tractor is actually pat patterned off a of full size uh, tractor. Well, now, in the modern tractors, you get tracks and all kinds of strange things. But, you know, back in the old days, you know, 10 years ago, a tractor had looked just like a lawn tractor, but it was just a lot bigger. So essentially just figuring out, you know, the four wheels, the steering, and that should scale up and down for anybody's vehicle they want to run. So, you know, once I have a template of here's how you do it and just go change these values to change the wheel sizes and the spacing and all this stuff. And then you can go through and add on if you want to add on different sensors. So essentially just a block of code, you can just copy it out of the, wherever it's stored and drop it into your URDF file. So I say, I want a GPS, you drop in this, this big chunk of code and it says, here's what I want it to look like. And you can either make it just a sphere or a, a cube, or you could get an actual, uh, like a mesh of a GPS antenna if you want it to look cute, you can put that on there. 
and you don't even have to have a physical, you don't have to build the entire physical vehicle. So I could have a thing that has four wheels driving around and then up above, see floating up here, there's a GPS, but my wheels are down here and just floating up above is a GPS antenna. And up here might be a, say a laser scanner on it. And they don't have to physically be connected, you know, on the screen. So you got these things floating around and that seems to work, work just fine. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of things floating around, I was watching one guy's video and I noticed he had this, this blue, like a blue sphere that was, that was hovering behind his vehicle. So it was back, you know, 10, 20 feet behind and up in the air some amount. So think of it like a, a drone flying around. And basically that he, he put that in there and that's a camera. So as he's driving around, the camera's watching the back of the vehicle. So when he makes his movies, he can see, he can watch the, watch the thing drive around so he can watch it trying to follow a path. He can watch the steering working. And it's just by simply adding an extra camera that, that follows the thing. And I assume, I assume he did that with the, uh, the URDF and gazebo, as opposed to, you know, you can go into RViz and say, define a camera and you might be able to get the camera to follow it. So it, it could be just something in RViz too, he was doing, but so there's lots of possibilities there. And back to the point, I'm just trying to come up with the simplest thing that will drive and is understandable. And then I'll, I'll go from there. Cause it could be this odometry the guy is generating isn't, it, it's kind of like, Kind of if I just back off and use stage, which stage is not a real simulator. It's not a full, it doesn't have the full physics. And you're basically just pushing this block around on a, a 2D surface. Well, this, this, this trick that this guy did is kind of going along those lines. He's just saying, here's, the, here's where the vehicle is and what direction it's pointed, converts that directly to odometry. Now, in reality, what I should do is read up the back wheels and do differential drive odometry off that or read the back wheels and the front steering angle and build odometry off that because if, if the, the whole point is I want to be able to have something runs close enough to a real vehicle that I can say I can drive it here on my screen and then go take my robot outside and have it work approximately the same way that would be that would be my goal to this whole thing <clears throat> I think that's the goal for all of us <laughs> well yeah, they're starting with four wheels and lines that connect them would be great. And, and back to your point that that's the goal for everyone. Well, you, you can get by with the stage simulator or you could back up to the turtle bot simulator, which you know puts a little turtle on the screen and drives it around. And you know, so, so you can get, you, you could make a simulator that just simply says, subscribe to command velocity. I'm gonna move this X, Y point around in memory. You don't even need a, you know, a screen or anything. You can just have something that says, if I tell it to go forward, well, then your, your forward value starts incrementing. If you tell it to turn, well, then it, it starts moving that point off to an angle. So there's a whole level of things you can do for simulation. And uh, once you get up to gazebo, that's got all the, uh, the physics engine built in, because last night I was playing with mine, I thought, well, it, I left the shock absorber stuff in there because I didn't have the ambition to try to strip it out and keep it working at that point. And it, that was still in there. And I thought, well, that, I'm sure that's still working. I, but the weights are, weights are all different now because they define it for an RC car. And I've got these giant tires on it. It's like when people build the monster trucks with the giant tires on them. That's kind of kind of the, the impression there. So I had it on the screen. I was poking at different things. Because when I was watching videos, somebody said, "Well, here's how you here's how you verify the steering, and that's why I said he turned on either the joints or the center of mass. And as we drive around, you could see it. If we put extra stuff on the debug stuff on the screen, you could see. And what was the other thing? Uh, and while I was in there, I thought, well, here, let me click the move. There's a little move button on Gazebo, and you can move it X, Y, or Z. So I I said I grabbed the the Z value and I picked it up and dropped it. And what I do, you can see the whole thing goes." Boom! You can see it. See the you can see the the chassis bounces up and down around the wheels. So yeah, the the shock absorbers are still working, and I'm not sure how that. I think I think the shock absorbers are also controlled by this guy's external uh, ROS control program that he wrote. So there there's a lot of information in there, and uh, what was the other thing I was going to say on that? There's a lot of stuff built into Gazebo for debugging stuff that you can you know turn on. Say, for instance, I turned on some joints or something, and you put in wireframes so you don't have the big, because the, the tires are just big black blobs on there right now. And you put in wireframe that shows you a nice, uh, I, 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 I should have posted a picture of that. I mean, I'll do that. I'll do that when we get done here. 
and um, you can see you can see the like the you know it's got the 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 red green blue uh, for for each wheel. You can see see where the center of the wheel is, and then it's got the joint the rotary joint on there. So there's another one of those on top of that. And as you drive, the one that's that's following the tire actually it actually rotates around like this as you drive, and the other one just stays fixed because that's just the fixed location of it. So there's a lot of information you can get out of the thing by by poking through there. Now, the, the other thing is, I'm, I'm trying to get this to work under gazebo. Well, now when they go to ROS 2 or somewhere in there, they, they went from gazebo to ignition, which ignition might still be gazebo with something else. It might just change the name. But I think there's a totally different simulator available these days. So that, that'd be yet the next thing to figure out is, you know, if I can get something that runs and seems reasonable, then I need to start looking at the new stuff and see what they're, see what they're doing there. So I don't know if that means I'm gonna I'm gonna have to switch to, to Ross 2. You know, one of these days, everybody's gonna have to switch to Ross 2 if they I, I guess they don't, you don't have to, but you won't get any updates on anything if you if you don't. So so someday I, I, you, I, I didn't find no uh, there is nobody that I know that really use Ross 2. <laughs> uh, uh, yesterday with the guy that I was talking, yes. Last week we installed it, uh, uh, but we didn't do much more than that. It's, it's like they, they, they have a, an impulse to do it, but when I don't know why, when they, they, they don't continue. They only try as something that they have to, to try, but not uh, for a real reason. Um, but uh, Going back to what you were saying, uh, I, I I need to ask you a question. Do you remember uh, you uh, one day you were talking about the accelerometers uh, and uh, I don't remember if it, it was you or I saw a video that they I think that. Uh, they use the accelerometer and move the object in the Airbus or the gazebo. Was you? I I don't understand the question. Yes, I yeah I I don't remember. I think that early this year we were talking about the accelerometers uh, and. You, I don't remember if you do it or you give uh, or or you uh, share with me a, a, a video of a guy that was using an accelerometer inside the simulation and moving the robot with the accelerometer uh, through the Arduino. So as, as a controller, instead of instead of like a joystick, he was running. I, yes. I I think I've seen people do that before, but I don't remember specifically okay. that case. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So I will uh, I that, will I will uh, work my history of YouTube to try to find it. Okay, and that that's just another example that you know the stuff is not fixed. You don't have to do it a certain way. If you can use an accelerometer as you as you rotate the thing around, say maybe maybe you rotate it like this. And you say, okay, treat that as a steering angle, and you send that down as a steering command to your vehicle, whether it's a real vehicle or a simulated one. As you do that, your front wheels will turn. You know, you just rope, as you just rock the accelerometer back and forth. And if you point it forward, then maybe you want your vehicle to drive forward, you point it back, you want it to drive back. So instead of using a joystick, you, you, you could just simply hook up an accelerometer. Just don't drop your accelerometer while you're doing that because your vehicle may run over you. So that's just, just one more one more thing to consider. <clears throat> but but as far as you know, you can translate the stuff back and forth from anything you want. So you could um, there, there's probably you know th th those headsets that you wear. You could probably those probably have accelerometers built in and measures where your head's looking. You could probably yeah, could, you could convert that yeah. data to something to run a vehicle too if you wanted to. So there's lots of yeah. The sky's the limit, as they say. You can do do anything you want with these. <clears throat> Yes, and uh, my main concern is to try to uh, to get the sensors and the Arduino in the simulator too, because uh, as I get better with that, 
uh, I will get uh, I will give the simulation more information to uh, to build it better. So you're trying to run an Arduino and your simulator at the same time? Yes, I, I was able to do that. Uh, it's not uh, something I now I won't be able to show it because I don't have the I'm trying to uh, let me show you. Um, I saw that I, I share it with you. I have a script uh, that I was able to uh, to publish a, a sensor, a temperature sensor a topic in the Arduino uh, through the through the simulation uh, and that's that's uh, that's very interesting but that was why I was so concerned that I have lost my work <laughs> because I was very happy to to with that because you can share uh, the script it was very easy and that was something that uh, be me solve it in the in the ross agriculture simulator you have an arduino to ross bridge so you can plug in the the, the arduino uh, to your usb in your computer and uh, that will feed the simulation with, uh, through ross through ross serial uh, and give the topics to the simulation, uh, it's not nothing out of the. Let me show you. You are seeing my computer. I was trying to find out the 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 Python files that you were talking about. Yes, we see kinetic game. Yes, the this one you you is this one. You have to launch out the the raw simulation. And then, if you launch out the the Arduino one, well, that crash. I don't know why, but uh, you will get the the um, well. I don't know why it crash, but you get the 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 Arduino working with the with the model. I, I would like you to make a comment here that I notice everybody seems to use the concept or the phrase is the the Ross agriculture simulator as though that's a a unique piece in the world where in reality it's it's a simulator it's navigation it's a bunch of other stuff all stuck together it's not it's not the simulator so you know you say you can send hook up an Arduino and send stuff into the simulation well the, the, the simulator is actually the stage, the stage simulator running. And probably what you're doing is sending it into the, some of the navigation software that you have running in ROS, because you can still have you know, all the stuff running in ROS in addition to the simulator that's also running at the same time. So don't, don't be confused by that one package thinking that is the simulator, because it's really a simulator and it's navigation and it's um, whatever else goes along with that. We, I, I keep hearing people say that. I just assume that that's what their belief is, that that's something unique and something something no, sacred. No, 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 it's a, it's all right. And it's it's a very good point because uh, it's confusing uh, when you uh, when I express myself that way. Uh, it's uh, it was a very good job that be me done. Uh, but there are there is a it is a conjunction of, of launch files and there is no secret about that, but it worked very fine. Yeah, yeah, just just don't get in the mindset that this is the simulator. It's it's just this simulator is just a piece of all that stuff. Yes. And in fact, the way the way all that was written, it's kind of it kind of muddies the, the waters because. You know, in the simulator, you also want, say, a simulated GPS, but it's an extra program that's running, and it's it just kind of all merged together in launch file, and it's not obvious 
you know, how much of that actually goes with the simulator. And so if you swapped out the simulator, then you'd have to have whatever it takes to talk to a real vehicle at that point. And somewhere when I was digging, I also find a real nice diagram of somebody saying, you know, here's, here's our vehicle code running down here. And then at the top on, on one side, they showed a block over here that says, this is the simulator. And over here's another block that says, this is the, uh, this is the physical vehicle. And essentially, if you get it to the point where you can just say run one or the other, then you have everything down below that, all the navigation software and all the, the state machines and all everything else that's running, then it, it's talking to one of those two top boxes. And it doesn't know if you have a simulated machine or a, a physical machine. Uh, if I find, find that diagram, I'll post that somewhere too, because that was it was very, very interesting to see that somebody had laid that out that way. And, and the other thing back to my point was, on, so on the, the Ross agriculture on the simulator, you look through the launch files and it's not obvious how much is um, normal raw stuff and how much of it is the simulator itself. And it's, it, it, it makes it a little more confusing that way, but. Yes, it's. it's so again, just a reminder, don't think that there's something sacred there that that that, that is the way you must do everything. <clears throat> no, 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 but one, uh, it, it's very important what you're saying because one of the, the main thing is that you can replicate the, the files that are there and build your own uh, and bring your own sensors to the to the Airbus through that through those scripts. And then another other thing you were saying is that you can plug an Arduino in. And somehow, I know when you said into the simulator, so I don't know if you meant the simulator code or you meant actually into stage simulator. See, the whole point of the, the stage simulator is that it's, it's trying to create the sensor data based on the world that it sees. So if you add, say, an Arduino with a, with a sensor on it, that's not necessarily tied to your simulation. Because in the simulation, as your tractor drives around, you know it's driving around like this and it's turning and and looking at here's an object over here, it sees that object. Well, if you have an external board that's tied into that, and it's and the external board sees a sensor, well, that's not going to be related to what's inside of the the simulated world. But you you can do that, and it, that works for lots of different things. And like you were saying, you could use an accelerometer to actually control the thing. Well, that doesn't actually you know, interact back and forth with the simulator. That's just simply saying, if I see if I tilt the thing forward, I want it to drive forward. You're just sending out, say, a command velocity message, which is going into, well, uh, depending on what level you're going into it. Uh, so a command velocity message will make its way into the simulator and your simulator, simulated vehicle will move. But if you had something that says, uh, I don't know, build your own keyboard or whatever, and you're gonna send in a, a navigation goal. Well, that's not going into the simulator, that's going into the, the ROS navigation software. And again, then the simulator out there should be, um, uh, you should, it should be invisible to you. You shouldn't know if you've got a physical vehicle or a simulator out there, out there running. So again, it's just a way of how you look at this stuff. and. Again, I just want to warn people, don't be confused by it because it, it, it all goes together and it all works, but that's not necessarily, um, uh, I, I, I can't, can't think of a phrase that right now, but. <clears throat> but it's under the sound. Okay, gents. Anything else, Juan? No. Well, good luck with your 11,000 cows. <laughs> hope those Chinese buy every one of them. I hope so. I'll talk to you later, guys. <laughs>